Welcome to Mike Brown Barbecue. Today we're going to smoke Texas style brisket on this 250 gallon offset smoker from start to finish. Stay tuned. Alright folks, so Mike Brown Barbecue is back. We're going to get this kick back off. We're going to smoke this Angus Pride brisket from Walmart. The best one I could find around in my area. Uh, thank you all for the thousand subs. Really appreciate that. With that being said, for our 1,000 sub celebration, we're going to do how to smoke a brisket 2.0. So let's go ahead and get this cut open. I do not have latex gloves today, so I'm out. So we're barehanding it. Ain't nobody eating this but me and my family. So it'll be I eat. Get this on out of here. Initial thoughts are, is this flat is thin, thin right there. But that was the best brisket that I could find. So we'll know how to trim that off before this thing gets too hot. We got a lot of fat to take off of it. So starting with this deckle right here. Or the mohawk, I apologize. Start with this mohawk. That right there will be good to make some sausage with. Fat cap's not real thick right there. It is thick on this side, however. Come down the side right here and trim just a little bit off. Just a little bit. Let's see what I'm working with here. I am going to be very aggressive on this trim because I don't want to smoke a big brisket and be outside in the heat all day long. little bit off right there you always got a pocket of fat right here with the fat we'll make some tallow that's just a big hunk of fat pretty much right there big hunk up in there scoop that out a little bit make this aerodynamic cut that off right there come down the side of our brisket here start right here and turn this around y'all see it see what we're working with here man that pisses me off look how thick that freaking fat is on there that's ridiculous we have a lot of tallow Want you about a quarter inch fat or less. I like to even take it down less than that sometimes. That way you get that what some people call sugar cookie bark. And it'll help if this brisket's really, really cold, which this one's okay, but not particularly really cold. I'm gonna come back and shave a little bit more off of this side right here the marbling in this is okay it ain't the best in the world but it'll do
big, big hunks of fat on this brisket. That's ridiculous. But that's what you get when you buy brisket from Walmart. Yeah, that's about all the fat I'm gonna trim off the top of here because uh, it's real. It's real. Uh, it's not cold enough. <laughs> Lots of unnecessary fat in this brisket. That's really why I haven't been buying a lot of briskets here lately. Store brought briskets have been shit. I ain't nothing really changed. I don't want to do it, folks, but I got to freaking do it. I'm about to trim this off right here. Got that side trimmed up as much. Well, there's a little bit of hot fat right there. Let's see what I'm looking like on this side. Not too bad. Lots of loose meat hanging off of it right there. See what this side looks like right here. Just some, some fat. I'll trim the thicker fat off, but that's about it. Got a little bit of oxidation right here. I'm gonna trim off. This is turning out to be a pretty pitiful brisket. Thanks a lot, Walmart. Got a big hunk of fat right there. That's coming out. Ain't really gonna be much of a point left of this one, guys. That's all the trimming I'm going to do to it. This brisket sucks. Let's shape it. Flip it back over. And we did the best we could with that brisket, folks. Trim a little bit more of this mohawk off. Let me make sure we get this aerodynamic. Hit a blood vein right there. No, that's not my finger. Let's 
got an abnormally large band of fat right there that's going to be fun rendering out. All right. So we got this dude shaped up. Let's turn it over to our non-presentation side. And let's get her seasoned up. And we'll go with our usual suspects. 16 mesh black pepper. Bondler 16 mesh black pepper. Go with a generous coat of that. I don't use binders. Don't believe in binders. Don't think I need binders. This brisket's plenty of sticky enough for uh, seasoning the stick. I had to trim a lot off of this brisket because it was in pretty bad shape. Whoever. The truth about briskets is, folks, is that people, when you go to the store bought briskets, it's the non spec briskets. Restaurants and barbecue restaurants get all the spec briskets. That's why theirs look better than the ones you get in the store do 90% of the time. Next, we're going on with our Bondler's Fiesta Season All Salt. Heavy coat of that. Don't forget your sides. Pat that in real good. Give it a minute to adhere. Soak in your meat. And I want to take note that I'm seasoning this brisket ahead of time. Save me a little time tomorrow. Uh, I don't feel like uh, waking up early in the morning to season this brisket. And I like to season them overnight and let that uh, seasoning dry brine in there. Gives it a little bit better flavor in my opinion. All right. Let's flip her over and let's do this side, our presentation side. Load her up with some black pepper. The wind out here is kind of bad today. It's been raining on and off. Getting in and doing this when I can. Go heavy with the pepper on the fat cap side. Helps you build bark. Pat that in. Just like that. And then we'll hit it again with a bondler season all salt. Generous portion of that. This gives it very good flavor. I like it. That's my seasoning profile for briskets, ribs, everything. Give it a good pat in. And also, letting this dry brine overnight will uh, help you build a better bark, too. It's okay, folks. I'm going to let this sit here, sweat it out a minute, and then it is going into my refrigerator. Next time y'all see me is when we start a fire tomorrow morning. Stay tuned, right. guys. It is the next day. We'll go ahead and get our fire started. What I got here is a chimney full of cheap-ass charcoal. The main purpose of this charcoal is just to burn me a coal bed down. So I buy the cheapest crap I can find because it really don't matter. You can get Lump, you can get Kingsford, you can get all that name brand shit, but at the end of the day, this is just to start a fire. Dump it right there. What I'm using today just to burn my coal bed down is some 12 inch pieces of water oak. Real dry, burn down quick. Go with three right there. We'll go with three up top. All right, we'll go three on the bottom, two up top. Three's not gonna fit because the logs are so short. Let me give this a little jump start. Handy dandy leaf blower.
Some leaf blower's dead, but we've got our fire started up good enough. Wood is a little bit damp, even though it's dry, but the moisture in the area is really high because of all the rain we've got in the past few days. But what I'm gonna do next is go take my brisket out, put it on the table. By the time this cold bed burns down, we'll throw our brisket on. Stay tuned. All right, folks, so our cold bed is burnt down. It's time to throw the brisket on. And that is what our brisket is looking like after dry burning in the fridge overnight and then taking it out of the fridge and letting the moisture reabsorb these seasonings. So I didn't cover it up last night. I let it dry brine. Took it out this morning. The surface is dried out. You just let it sit out, let the moisture come back in it and uh, draw the moisture out and it'll get wet again. Some people don't like doing that. They say it draws all the moisture out of the meat and dries it out. I had not seen no difference. If you want to save yourself a little time on cook day, just do it the day before. And we're going to put him right there in the middle. So we got this brisket on. I want to open this pit again, probably for about three, three and a half hours. This is a small brisket. We started out with a 12 pound brisket. I aggressively trimmed it. It had its deficiencies on what I like on brisket. So an aggressive trim, plus I wanted meat for sausage and fat for tallow. So this is approximately a seven and a half to eight pound brisket right now. I anticipated on taking about nine to 10 hours to smoke. It is eight o'clock central time in Southeast Texas. So we'll go ahead and close this down and we'll go throw our wood on for our smoke. Stay tuned. All right, folks, time has come. Smash this cold bed down. Got a nice screaming hot cold bed. Y'all got one stubborn log that lags a little bit behind the others. He's gonna go right there in the middle. Scoot this cold bed up. Spread things out real easily. Clean the front out. There we have it. Cold bed is smashed down. What I'm going to use today bark dense pieces of red oak. One right there. And then a real big barky log right here. This was actually part of a tree limb. I like using these pieces in the beginning of a smoke because it will give you a real smoky fire. Real good for cold smoking sausage. And then I'm going to mix in some water oak with it today also because I need to burn it. I've got a lot of wood right now and I ain't been smoking as much here lately. So it needs to get burned. All right, folks, as you can see, that's starting to catch on. That right there with the weather today being up above the 80s, that's going to carry me for probably about two and a half hours. I will bring you guys in every time I manage to fire in our three hour mark. And we check in on the brisket. And also I may bring y'all in for a few temperature updates when I gotta tighten the fire up and things like that. All the tips and tricks I normally share with y'all, but this is somewhat of a how to smoke a brisket video 2.0 as we done did one before. So that's starting to burn down. It's low and slow. That's how I want it. We'll close this down to about an inch open. I want to keep my fire at about 250, 275 with a small brisket like that. You don't want to hit it with too much heat up front because it'll shrink up and get tight on you and uh, it'll take longer to cook. So we're going to keep the fire about 250, 275 and we're going to run it low and slow. And by low and slow, 
I mean a low flame and a slow fire, not a high flame and a high fire. People seem to think that low and slow means 225, 200, 250. Not what low and slow means. Low and slow means low flame, slow fire. So we got that fire going. I'll bring you guys back next time I do something with this pit. Stay tuned. All right, folks. So our target temp has dropped. Believe it or not, I have not had to mess with this fire since I set it up. So it was dialed in. The spacing was just right. It carried me right at 275 the whole way. Let's see what we're looking like now. The red oak is completely gone, and the water oak is still there a little bit. Reason being, red oak burns hotter and faster than water oak. Water oak burns longer and almost as hot, not quite. So that's why I like mixing some water oak in there. You get a more consistent burn with water oak. As far as the smoke profiles of the wood, the, uh, the water oak is a little bit more... Uh, I wouldn't say intense smoke flavor, but it's a different smoke flavor. The red oak is the best smoke flavor in my opinion. You mix the two, it's pretty good. The water oak is, is good to smoke with. Water oak and red oak are actually damn near the same thing. They're, they're kin some kind of way. Some people will say, well, water oak is red oak. Not necessarily. They do taste, uh, got a little bit different smoke flavor. But that being said, Smash this up in the cold bed. Oh yeah. Now we got us a big nice cold bed. That log still got just a little bit left in it. Oh yeah. Nice cold bed. Nice big coals. Alright, since the water oak burn up slower last time we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go with dense water oak logs on the bottom this time one right there and one right there spaced apart nicely and then we'll go with two red oaks one back there and then one right here in the front. I've got them all spaced very wide because that's what's giving me my good burn times right here. And that'll give you more of a smoky fire when you space them wide like that. If I get into a spot where my temp starts to drop because the spacing's too much, I'll bring you guys back in for that. And we'll, uh, we'll tighten the fire up. But this worked out perfect for me last time. Let's see if we can do it twice in a row. If we can, that'll be a first for me. So, I'm going to go ahead, close that back down to an inch where I had it at before, and I'll bring you guys back at a three hour mark and we'll look at this brisket. So, stay. Alright guys, it's been about 15 minutes since we last managed the fire. I just wanted to bring you in and show you what kind of smoke I'm running up there. You're going to end up with this dirtier smoke anytime you put new wood on a fire. A lot of people open the firebox up and let it burn down, but don't do that. That is where you get your good smoke flavor from right there. Everybody mistakes that for dirty smoke. That is not dirty smoke. That is good smoke that puts flavor on your meat up front. You need that. If your cold bed's dying down, you throw some wood on there and you need to leave it open to catch a little bit. I suggest you do it, especially when you're first putting your first set of wood on. But once that cold bed is established and it's screaming hot, Throw that wood on and then close that firebox door down and let it do its thing. One thing I will say that uh, hadn't been a problem today and I'm shocked, but uh, this wind is hauling butt. But it hadn't affected the way this smoker runs. It runs like a beast. But I just wanted to bring y'all in and show y'all that. That's the kind of smoke that puts the good flavor on your meats. That's what you want. We'll go over here and look at the temp. All right, our temp is just a hair above 250. So it's gradually rising up where it should go to 275. It might overshoot 275 a little bit, but that's okay. It'll come back down and settle in. It's not the end of the world. Everybody thinks, hey, I got to have a perfect fire the whole time. 
That's the beauty of barbecue. That's the beauty of putting flavors on your meat. It's different wood can bust at different time, burns in different stages, throws different flavors on your meats. It's a lot big mouthful I said right there, but I had to say it. So we're almost back up to 75, 15 minutes after we managed a fire. Our other gauge, it's just a little bit behind, but that's typical. You'll have a little bit more airflow on that end where it's pulling it. Really the way the smoker works is everything's going to go up there and hit the top of the smoker and then come back down into this end over here. That's pretty much settled in. And we're settled in right there. So it's settling in at about 270, 265, somewhere in there. I'll take that. If it stays right there the whole time, I'm good with that. That's pretty dang consistent. Anyway, I just wanted to bring y'all in and share some knowledge with y'all next time you guys see me will be either when we have to tighten that fire up or manage the fire or our three hour mark and uh we'll check and see what our brisket's looking like so it is uh 10 15 and we're at the two hour 15 minute mark on our cook i'll see you guys in a little while right, guys Stay so we've here. reached the three hour mark Officially, actually a little bit past three hour mark, three hours and 30 minutes to be exact. It is 11.30, so let's see what she's looking like. It's the first time I've opened the smoker. It's the first time I've looked at anything. Our temp is sitting right on 275. So let's see what we got. And what we got is a good looking brisket. The bark that's already set. Still real tight. That's not quite rendered up top. I'll bring you guys in for a close up on that. Lighting's not real great out here. Fire's still a little bit smoky. I opened my firebox door to kind of combat that. What I'm going to do now is I've got this big band of fat right here on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and rotate that brisket right there and let the heat catch this side. Nothing's burning. Fat softening up on the point. There's no dark spots. We just need to render that big band of fat right there. This one had a irregular big piece of fat. And our little petite brisket is starting to shrink up, which means it's cooking down nicely. Let me go in there and give y'all a close-up of this. That's what she's looking like right there, guys. Looking real nice. So, so we've got that rotated three and a half hours in. We're going to go ahead and shut this down. It's nowhere near ready to be done. And I'll bring you guys back here in a minute when I have to manage the fire. So far, I haven't had to mess with it. I'm anticipating on wrapping this brisket probably around the seven to six hour mark. We're three and a half hours in. We'll check on this brisket again in another two hours to see where we're at. Stay. All right, here. guys. So we're at the two and a half hour mark on this burn time, which puts us at the four and a half hour mark on the total cook. See what we got. Channel log on that side, completely burnt out. There's still a little bit left of these two right here. Not a whole lot. We'll just put them right there in the middle, smash anything up. In front of our coal bed out. Let the fresh coals get underneath there. Go ahead and scoot this up. this back just a little bit.
just like that. We'll go on with our next pieces. So go on with a dense piece of water oak. Put it right there. Another piece right there on top of that one. Then we'll go with two pieces of dense red oak. Spaced out apart. Just like that. And we'll let it run like that right there. Wide, spaced out, far apart. Still going to run a low and slow fire at this point. We're at the four and a half hour mark on the cook. I expect to get another two hours out of this. At the six hour mark, we're going to check this brisket once again. So like when we checked it at that four, three and a half hour mark, it was still feeling real tight. So we're going to let it ride. So the next time you guys see me will be when we manage this fire. I really haven't had to do a lot of fire management today, which has been nice. I've been doing this same setup over and over and again, letting it carry. And my tips haven't got below 250. So the highest my temp has got is about 285. So I've been letting it do its thing. It's been pretty consistent. So I'm going to let it keep rocking just like this until it shows me it can't. That being said, we'll go ahead and get this closed down. To an inch like we've been doing. And the next time you guys see me, we'll probably be at the five and a half hour, six hour mark. We'll check that brisket once again to see if it's ready to wrap. That was an eight pound brisket, so it might be about that time, but we'll see. Stay tuned. All right, folks, we are just a little bit past the six hour mark. I'm not ready to wrap this brisket. We will have to do the uh, fire management once more. Let's check it and see where we're at. And that is looking real nice, our little petite brisket. We're softening up, definitely getting softer. The main thing is to feel right up underneath here and it is starting to give that right there you put your fingers in right here and it feels spongy like that means it's ready to wrap so I'm gonna go get my butcher paper set up show you guys how I wrap our little petite baby brisket stay tuned all right so we got our brisket on here bark is set nice and good it's actually got a little bit of bend to it so that tells me it's given if I had to put an internal temp on that right now I'd be willing to bet that that's probably right about 175 180 ish but I cook my briskets by feel so I don't put meat probes in them just don't mean to brag on myself but I'm that good anyway I'm going to go ahead and pour some tallow over this dude. Probably going to have a little bit of a bald spot right there, but it'd be like that sometimes. I'm going to put plenty of tallow down for this. I like putting tallow down when I wrap my briskets. Me, it just makes it that much better. And what I like to do, excuse the wind, is fold it over like that. Fold that in like that, scrunch it up real tight. Do the same thing with the other side. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Go over once, pull it tight, scrunch it up. Go over one more time. I've cut my butcher paper a little bit on the long side. I just take me a pair of scissors and 
turned off the excess. And I'll come back with this dude. Fold it like that. Fold that down. Scratch everything up real tight. Just like that. And we will go back on the smoker. We're at six hours and 30 minutes. I anticipate this taking about another hour, hour and a half. But we do need to go manage the fire. I'm going to go put this back on, and I'll bring you all back for the fire management. Stay all right, tuned. folks. So we just got through wrapping up our brisket. This fire is completely gone. Nothing but coals. Good coals. So I might have waited a little bit too long to try and manage this fire. Good thing is, is we just wrapped the brisket, so it can get a little wild and it ain't gonna hurt nothing. I need to get the heat back up and it's still showing 250 on the dial. We'll go in with a big piece of water oak right there. Another one right there and our red oak right here and right there. So at this point, what I'm looking for is burn time. I'm not worried about dense or dry or whatever. I'm just looking for heat because we're already wrapped. When I wrap my briskets, I like to crank them up to about 300, 325 to finish them out. So we're going to run our fire a little bit hotter for that. Then we'll put bigger logs on here, trying to get more burn time. Hopefully this will be the last time that we manage the fire. That brisket's been wrapped at the six and a half hour mark. If I get two more hours out of this, that ought to put me at the uh, eight and a half, nine hour mark. Might be just enough to uh, finish the brisket out. But I'm going to go ahead and close this down to about an inch. And the next time you guys see me will be either when we manage this fire or we pull the brisket. All right, Stay. folks, we are at the eight hour mark. I guesstimated this brisket take anywhere from eight to ten hours. Now I want to start checking it and being real careful. If this brisket is not done, I will start checking it about every 45 minutes after this to make sure I don't overdo it. Let's see what we got. Oh, yes, that's done, folks. That brisket is very pliable. You flip it over and you press down right here and it's got a lot of give and that means it is done you just want to slide your fingers up underneath it and if you could press up in the middle of that point which is right there that brisket is done so we finished this brisket a roughly an eight pound brisket maybe just a little bit less took us about eight hours yep eight hours that's how long it took to smoke that brisket so what I'm going to do now is take this off and let it rest, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with it next. Stay All right, tuned. guys, we're back. And I thought I had the camera rolling, but I didn't. But as you can see, this brisket is wrapped up in plastic saran wrap in the butcher paper. That is how I'm going to rest this. Everybody raves about the full rest, which I'm not knocking it. I'm sure it's a good technique. But they do this over at Truth Barbecue with their briskets and beef ribs. They wrap them up in saran wrap once the temp drops down on them and they rest them overnight like that. I'm going to be resting this brisket in this oval turkey roaster right here. You'll see. That it's got a dial on it. You can put it all the way down to 150, 145 put it on warm so that's what I'm gonna do with it so tonight this brisket will rest right here and this oval turkey roaster until I get ready to cut it in the morning about eight nine o'clock it'll rest roughly from anywhere 12 to 16 hours okay guys so the next time you see me will be when we cut this brisket tomorrow morning brisket for breakfast Stay right, guys, here. so it's been resting overnight for 14 hours. It's time to cut it up and see what we got. It's gonna be brisket for breakfast. Look 
at all that tallow that's already in there. And you can wring that tallow out. That's the good thing about resting this and that plastic wrap is it locks all the juices in here. No juices escape. The brisket has no choice but to suck them juices back up in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, look how pretty that is. That is a beautiful Texas style brisket. Pour that tallow over the top of it. And our little pretty brisket came out real nice. It's nice and tender, nice and pliable, but it's not overcooked. It moves. That's what you want. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a money shot slice. Look at that, folks. That is money. All the fat is rendered out right there, except for that real thick part. Look at all the juice running out of that. I'm not even squeezing that. Let's take one more money shot. Right here down the middle. And I'm satisfied with that, considering that this was a dead gum brisket that had a huge deckle in it. I would have liked to render a little bit more of that out, but you know what? I'll take it. Look at those. Don't those look nice? All right, we'll get the camera set up for taste test. All right, guys, let's go ahead and do this taste test. What I like to do is start with the very end piece right here. Take me a slice off of that. And that'll tell you how good you really did. See how juicy that is? That is juicy. When you get that juicy, you know you did your job. Mm-hmm. Mm. Good old Texas-style brisket. Ain't nothing like breakfast. breakfast. And there's nothing... But a flat point uh, piece right there, nice and tender. Passes the bend test. Passes the bend test. Holds up under its own weight. Pulls right apart. That's how you know you cook the perfect brisket. Mmm. Wow. That's pit master privilege. When you nail a brisket, you get to eat it the next day. That's what's up. That's flat. It's so juicy. Look at all the juice running out of that flat. That's the benefits to having a real even trim and doing this overnight rest. And that plastic saran wrap, because all that juice has no choice but to suck back up into that brisket. Mmm. All right, guys, let's move on to our point. This is one of my absolute favorite slices on the brisket. It's this one right here. With all that juice running out, that's actually that Texas-style burn-in right there. It's the best bite in barbecue. Look at all that juice running out. Just look at it. This is going to be amazing. Here we go. Mmm. That was heaven. That was so good. So good. There ain't nothing like 
that barky, juicy burn in right there off the end of the brisket. Mm. So good. Moving on to a point slice right there. Bends just right. Holds up under its own weight. Pulls right apart. Mmm, that's money. Mmm, that is so good. Gosh, I don't know how good this is. Especially when you're eating breakfast. Especially when you're eating brisket in the morning for breakfast. First thing you eat. That's a win win. I'm telling you guys, just. Just look at that. Look at all that juice coming out of there. Just look at all that juice coming out of there. You can't beat that. That's what's up. Well, this brisket cook was definitely a success. Probably one of the best briskets I've done to date. It's barky. It's peppery. It's super, super juicy. Mmm, I can't stop eating it. It's just cooked perfect. And I cooked this entire brisket and did not probe it for internal temp, not one time. I might be pretty good at this, but maybe not. But I think I am. So a quick recap of the cook. It took us just a little bit over eight hours to cook this. We smoked it with red oak for eight hours at 275. We wrapped at the six hour mark, actually six and a half hour mark. We wrapped it up, put tallow in the butcher paper, brought it up to not internal temp, but brought it up to fill. But it felt good. I pulled it. I then rested it for two hours and then wrapped it up tight in saran wrap and put it in my turkey roaster oven. From there, it rested for a total of 14 hours till now. And we just sliced it open. And this thing is money. I've. <laughs> I wish they had a taste button on YouTube where y'all can go in there and taste this, man. It is so freaking awesome. I mean, that burn in right there. You just you can't beat that, man. That's, that's money right there. Just get it. Mmm. Bark is money. You get the pepper. And the other good thing about wrapping in that saran wrap with butcher paper is if you did crisp anything up overnight, Anything that got crisp up will soften up, and you won't ever know it. But this brisket was definitely a success. Thank you guys for the 1,000 subscribers. I really appreciate that. I feel like I should have done more for a 1,000 sub video, but I've been busy here lately. I hadn't been on YouTube as much. Been uh, going to kids' ball games, raising chickens, and working. So YouTube is kind of like my little side gig. It's not something that I do all the time, but I'm going to try to do more of like I did last year. Brisket. It's money. Money, 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 money. Look at that flat. You can't ever say you've seen a flat that juicy. The flat's perfectly juicy. The point's perfectly juicy. Just an all-around win-win situation. And guys, you can cook a brisket just like this one right here. Whether you got an offset spoker, Weber kettle pellet smoker anything you can do one just like that if you follow the same techniques that i do and then you can change it up and make it kind of your own that's the beauty of a uh, barbecue take everything and you make it your own that right there that's one of my top three briskets i've ever done that sucker's good anyway y'all let me know in the comments what you want me to cook next time which i know it's going to be beef dino ribs that will be the next video that was supposed to be this video but they done been so sold out in my area, couldn't find any. All right, folks, so that's going to be it today. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button if you like this content. Thanks for the 1,000 subscribers. Until next time, peace out.